Senator Kramer, uh, as you can see there, we had a little bit of issue. First, let me make sure you can hear me okay. Senator, welcome to Meet the Press. It's good to be with you. I can hear you fine and hope you can hear me. I can hear you just fine. Let me start with um, sort of a form of the same issue here, sure. but I'm going to use Senator Pat Toomey, your Republican colleague from Pennsylvania. Here's what he said last night after the decision came down to essentially throw out the president's lawsuit in Pennsylvania. With today's decision by Judge Matthew Brand, a longtime conservative Republican, whom I know to be a fair and unbiased jurist, to dismiss the Trump campaign's lawsuit, President Trump has exhausted all plausible legal options to challenge the result of the presidential race in Pennsylvania. I congratulate President-elect Biden and Vice President-elect Kamala Harris on their victory. Do you concur with Senator Toomey that it is now over? Uh, Chuck, first of all, again, thanks for the opportunity to be with you. And no, I, I do not, although I think it's very likely. But that said, I think we, again, I don't know why we're so easily offended by a, a president that's carrying out all of his legal options in court, not enhancing you know, or encouraging any riots or burnings of buildings or beating up of, of Democrats coming out of Democratic meetings or events. Um, it's just a simple legal process. And really, there have not been a lot of evidentiary hearings that have involved the Trump case. There have been other hearings. I, I noticed that you used a number that was rather large of, of uh, cases that have been thrown out or dismissed. But in, when it comes down to actually looking at evidence, there have not been many, if any, and maybe the Pennsylvania one was the first one. So I think everyone ought to calm down a little bit. I don't see this as an attack on our democracy. I mean, we spent four years listening to news shows and liberals uh, discrediting, trying to discredit mm -hmm. the Trump administration to the point of spying on him by the last administration, $40 million spent on a on a independent counsel that started with no evidence and ended proving that there was no evidence. And then, of course, this this crazy impeachment. So I think right. I think what we're experiencing now, um, everyone, I just ex just relax and, and uh, let it play out in the legal way. We'll be just fine. You've implied that there's no damage being done just now in those comments. So you believe well, what, there was a the, lot of the spectacle? Done in the last I mean, four years. yeah. Well, I want to ask you the spectacle of Rudy Giuliani on Thursday, um, using the headquarters of the Republican Party. I mean, at one point, one of the lawyers accused a dead dictator of somehow uh, being a part of this. I mean, are you really saying that the president is is? You're out there saying the president's not encouraging somehow uh, uh, any any way of sort of being disorderly about this. How is that not encouraging? disruption and, and disorder. You're, he's accusing the entire system of being corrupt. Is that not undermining the democracy? Well, first of all, what they're claiming is that there's a lot of evidence and they're presenting that evidence in cases. Now, it's up to them to present that evidence, Chuck, obviously. And we've yet to see a real hearing where evidence was presented. And and they're not obligated to present it at, you know, yesterday or tomorrow, although the sooner the better from my perspective. But I'm just speaking strictly now from uh, this attack on democracy, as you call it. This is these are legal systems. This is these are processes that are in our Constitution, in our laws. And they're not just appropriate, but they're really an obligation, frankly, to the millions of Americans that President Trump is a reflection of. I know you, you know a lot of people like to think that we're the reflection of him. He's a reflection of millions of people that want to see him fight this to the end. Now, there has to be an end, Chuck. I, I agree. There has to be an end. Yeah. I frankly do think it's time to, well, it's past time to start a transition, to at least cooperate with the transition. I'd rather have a president that has more than one day to prepare should Joe Biden you know, end up winning this. But in the meantime, again, he's just exercising his legal options. I, I just want to confirm you believe that the, the the head of gsa tomorrow morning at this point ought to say the transition needs to begin it it, it looks like joe biden's going to be the apparent winner yes there's more to go through if, if this is what the head of gsa said yes there's still more to go through but it looks like joe biden's the apparent winner let's allow the transition process to begin should that be what happens tomorrow morning yeah, it, it should happen tomorrow morning because it didn't happen last Monday morning. I, I just think you have to begin that process, give the incoming administration all the time they need. Now, I will also say this. I think that um, 
Vice President uh, Biden has been a bit over dramatic as it relates to Operation Warp Speed and the distribution of the uh, of uh, the vaccines and things. I mean, none of those things are a secret. The military is in charge of Operation Warp Speed. The military is still going to be there after the election. But there are lots of other things. Um, and, and I I've informed my staff uh, well over a week ago that they ought to cooperate with any transition outreach mm-hmm. because we want to be prepared. We have to you know we have a government to run regardless of who the president is. Does it concern you? that um, so many, and I'm sure, and I'm curious what happens when you have your own constituents that say to you, Senator, I know this was stolen. I just don't believe it. Um, what, are you gonna, what is it going to take to, these, to, to tell those folks, your constituents in North Dakota, look, I know you don't like the results, but it was fair and square. Yeah, Um, that's a great point. That's a great point. That's where leadership really does have to step in and where you have to both be attentive to them and and then use your circle of influence. And I think what it's going to take, Chuck, is for all of these legal avenues to be exhausted. Um, And then at at some point, we start preparing for another election. Uh, There's your monologue illustrated a couple of times in our history when there have been challenges. And uh, the good news is that our, our republic is very resilient. You do realize that that in this century, there have been four closer presidential elections, 2000, 2004, 2012, 2016. Believe it or not, the the popular vote win here by Biden is even larger than Barack Obama's was over Mitt Romney. So at what point does this undermine our, you heard Governor Larry Hogan, this is not coming from a member of the media, it's a Republican who thinks this is undermining um, the look of America to the world. Yeah, I know that a lot of people would like a nice, tidy, um, historical sort of historically traditional sort of uh, election. But we don't have a traditional president. He didn't get there in a in a traditional way. I never cease being amazed at people like you who are surprised when he's not behaving the same way as previous presidents have behaved. But I also go Hope back to the fact senator. that just just last year, just last year, <laughs> just last year, um, Hillary Clinton referred to him as an illegitimate president. We went through four years of of uh, trying to delegitimize him. I think that uh, to have this process is just fine. And, and who knows? Remember, we've also never in history in this century, any other century, had a massive vote by mail, you know, balloting where um, there was things like ballot harvesting and ballot curing, things that we've never even heard of before that were taking place. And frankly, a, a much, much lower uh, rejection rate of mail-in ballots than just four years ago when there were many fewer of them. So it's okay to go through this process, make sure it's being done right, make sure that it never happens again if there are irregularities. We can't ignore hundreds of signed affidavits. That's evidence. That's way more evidence than Robert Mueller had. Well, so far, though, that is not the case because this evidence, they haven't presented it in court because they don't have it, it appears. We'll see. As you said, if they have the evidence, they should present it. And they've yet to present it in a courtroom because you can't lie to a judge. Anyway, Senator Kramer, Republican of North know Dakota. That's the reason, Chuck, but well, we don't know, know but they haven't yeah. done it yet. Anyway, I really appreciate yeah. you coming on. Many of your colleagues um, my, have not my wanted best to. In Richmond. <laughs> yes, you got it. Thank you, sir. Hello from Washington. I'm Chuck Todd, and thanks for checking out the Meet the Press channel on YouTube. Click on the button down here to subscribe, and click over here to watch the latest interviews, highlights, and other digital exclusives.